Good evening, everybody. Keith here. Hoping everybody had a good day, enjoying life, living life, loving life. Wanted to talk to everybody tonight again about the uh, UCC in uh, affidavits. Because when we do these affidavits for courts, what I think we want to do is we've already had a contract forced upon us. We already know these courts are courts of equity. And when we talk about equity, we're talking about fair and impartial. And yet when we get to the court, we know it's not fair and impartial because it's been forced upon us. And I think the best way to um, deal with this is through the uh, affidavit in making that affidavit a contract. That's right. Make it a contract. When we think about um, putting an affidavit in a court, we, talk, we think about making a, a, a statement of truth. And so when we do that, we've, already, we, we've got to understand that we've already been presented an offer and under, um, under the force of arms, under duress of the force of arms, and coercion being threatened to be taken to jail, sign this or, that's, that's actually, um, what do they call that? Um, oh, extortion. They call that extortion. And we can, we can use that to our own offense. We're not going to defend. We're going to fend. To defend means not to fend. So we're not going to defend. We're going to fend. We're going to become offensive. And what we do in these uh, um, contracts, remember I, I did a uh, video not too long ago about the UCC in signing 1-308 and using 1-202 uh, as notice of knowledge, 1-103 as hierarchy of choice of law, 1-105 um, which is your severability because you're foreign, and then 3-502, which is dishonor, because it's done in fraud. And then 9-402, uh, which the uh, secured party not obligated, and 9-607, um, collection and enforcement. And so what we have to do, I think, is um, concentrate on the uh, contract itself, which is the ticket and the words that they use on the ticket. And so in our affidavit, we're going to form a contract. What, what they did was they offered a contract, and they forced that acceptance upon you. Now that you accepted it, you, are ha you have the ball in your court. And what are you going to do anytime you have the ball in your court? You're going to do your best to be offensive. You're going to go, go on the offense. And what you're going to do is you're going to offensively amend their contract in affidavit form. So, and, and it's basically kind of like uh, what Carl Lentz does. He, he uh, um, presents his affidavits using the UCC, um, holding them to that UCC Uniform Commercial Code. And when we do this, we need to construct our affidavits by rebutting the offer, not necessarily for fraud, but accepting the offer and showing the fraud and holding them to that contract. Because now that they've, they've given you an offer and you've accepted, um, under, even, even under force, you have the ball in your court now and you can go on the offensive. And that's what we need to do. We need to quit being scared little shits and start going on the offensive in this. And we do that not by going out to the streets and getting, getting in these yellow vest uh, protests. We don't do it by acting up in court. We do it by holding honor ourselves in knowing the contract law and amending the contract that they gave us. Whether, it was, um, whether we did it under duress of force of arms and extortion or, or whatever, we accept that, amend the contract appropriately so that they refuse it. Because they're going to refuse it if you if you amend it appropriately according to the to the clarification of the law, and that's what we need to do. I think is just amend these uh, these contracts in affidavit form. So when we when we go to these courts with these tickets, say it's a uh, traffic ticket for speeding, um, 
what we need to do is I accept the uh, the nice gentleman's offer. Um, uh, as you can see, I, I clearly signed um, or autographed. I, I don't sign anymore. I autograph. But you'll also see that I showed my prior intent of reservation of rights by putting UCC 1-308 first. Or all rights retained is what I use now. I use all rights retained and then dot, dot, dot. And then just my first name in English block lettering. And that is um, accepted in any court anywhere. If a mark is accepted, then an autograph can be accepted as well as a signature. And we all know we're allowed to use just a mark. There are people in this world that are still illiterate and you have to go to court and have things explained to them verbally and then just put a mark on a paper in agreement. That's all it is. And so what we're going to do is we're going to amend these um, contracts and, and their, their adhesion contracts is what they are. And so what we're going to do is they, they've given us the uh, offer to contract and we're going to amend that contract through an affidavit by clarifying points that that force them into the corner of not responding and when they do that that's called dishonor okay and so now we've got them on the uh, UCC 3-502 that we already stated in, uh, in in the beginning of this video um, UCC 1-308 is your reservation of rights 1-202 is you gave them knowledge 1-303 or 1-103 is the hierarchy or cho choice of law. This is where we get to the old 1-207 where it spoke that uh, everything was, uh, the code was construed to be in harmony with that of the common law. And the way they word it today is that it's supposed to have, um, they're, they're supposed to be construed to be equal throughout all jurisdictions. They, they've changed the wording on it, but it still means the same thing. It's supposed to be uh, um, you know, it's supposed to be in harmony with the common law, which is your supreme law of the land. And then you have 1-105 is your severability because you're a common man in your private capacity, not in a corporate person capacity. So, again, that's, that's why you're traveling. That's why you're doing anything. If you're not involved in commerce in the middle of a contract under performance of some sort, then you're not under contract law. You're in your private capacity and they can't hold you to a contract. That's why when they pull you over and give you a speeding ticket, it's under duress and force of arms and extortion. And so when they get to the point where they don't respond to your affidavit within a certain amount of time, and actually in contract law, it's three days. And then, and, and I'll explain that to you sometime. I, I still have to uh, work rework that. But uh, as far as I knew, it's supposed to give them 21 days and then 10 days. And that gives them a total of 31 days. And then you do your final three days. And then that's when you have your judgment. But um, like I said, it's somebody said it's three days. And then they're in dishonor. So once they're in dishonor, you send them a letter that they're in dishonor, um, giving them 21 days. At that 21 days, you now have a judgment. But again, like I said, I'll, I'll rework that and do another video on that. Um, in the meantime, back to this. Um, now when they've um, not responded to your affidavit in the given amount of time, they've been given notice that you reserved all your rights, that you have your choice of law, law which is supposed to be construed in harmony with that of the common law, and that you are foreign to their corporate jurisdiction, and that you're a secured party that's not obligated to the debt, and that they have no collection or enforcement on it because you're not obligated to the, to the debt. Okay? So now that they're not responding to that, now you hold them in dishonor because you're, you're, you're making that affidavit as a contract. You're amending the contract within that affidavit. And, and you can put, clearly state it. So you can, you can state it that I understand that I was offered a contract under uh, duress of uh, force of arms and uh, threats of extortion, and so I appear today, uh, or I'm, I'm, I'm present today in a special appearance to address these matters under my reservation of rights or retention of rights to give the court, again, uh, to give the court knowledge, notice and knowledge that I am familiar with the hierarchy of laws and that I stand in the common law um, at all times, and the, uh, the uniform commercial code that the uh, policy enforcer is trying to enforce upon me is construed to be in harmony with that of the common law. And 
though he didn't realize that I'm in common law at the time, I'd like the courts to uh, uh, know that now. And uh, if he'd care to come forward and honor that contract, um, I have some questions to uh, clarify before we go any further in amending this contract. Please call him forward because he's not going to be present at the first initial appearance or the, uh, the arraignment or anything. And this is when you do that. You want to do this very first appearance and, and let him know that you need a court date to set up to put him on the stand for uh, interrogatories. You're going to question him about the contract that he offered to see that he see if he's competent to even offer that contract. And then when you show that he's not competent to offer the contract, it's an offer of a contract that came invalid and therefore it was done without honor. And therefore dishonor. OK, and so that's what we're going to start working on is, is something to help people in that regard, because I think that's the best way to do it. They're enforcing contract. Contract is equity law. It's supposed to be, and that's the basis of contracts. They're supposed to be equitable, um, which means fair and impartial. Okay, all contracts are supposed to be fair and impartial. In other words, they're supposed to be an even playing board. It's not supposed to be neutral. It's supposed to be impartial. That means all parties are supposed to suffer the same detriments if there are detriments, and they all enjoy the benefits if there are benefits. You can't have one party enjoying the benefits while the other party uh, uh, suffers detriment. That's not a contract. That's fraud, and that is a criminal act, period. That's why we have courts of equity. So I think in order to uphold all this stuff in courts of equity, in which the common law runs parallel, common law runs parallel with the court of equity, and that's why we do common law under the equity um or use equity under the common law. Use the Uniform Commercial Code under the common law. Always stand in your private capacity as a man, but present it as a contract, and or, or present it as an amendment to the contract because they gave you a contract. You accepted it, and now that you've accepted it and made amendments, and they're no longer willing to go forward with it, that's dishonor, okay? So, and that's where we need to get them is, is dishonoring that contract because they're the one that brought it. And when they refuse it um, through your affidavit, then that is the proof of the dishonor. Now, once you've got your affidavit in and they've dishonored it by not responding, um, you give them a second chance to respond for 10 days, like I, like I said before. Uh, and when they don't respond again, you send them a final, no final notice three times at bat, first strike, second strike. Third strike is three days to um, to let them notice to, to let them know they are now currently in fault and have not given or not taken the opportunity to cure and therefore you are passing judgment. Okay, when you pass judgment, you're going to pass that judgment to a higher court, and that judgment goes in as a judgment. Okay, you're going to present it as your judgment and order that court to enforce the judgment. Okay, because it's already a judgment. It's already made in law under Uniform Commercial Code that if they dishonored a contract that they offered by not accepting your amendments that are true, then they are in dishonor. And the international courts will uphold that. When it comes to collecting on those, there are four different ways to collect on them. Um, you can get a, a lien. You can do a uh, warrant for sale or warrant for seizure. Um, um, God, I can't remember them all. There's, I remember three. The, the lien, the warrant where you have the uh, push a warrant, uh, send a warrant to the uh, clerk of courts, and they even have the form for you. Um, and then, uh, then take it to the sheriff, and the sheriff will go hold a, a sale. They will start hauling shit out of the house and start selling it, auction. OK, um, the another way is you can sell these judgments. There are companies out there that will buy these judgments. So if you've got like a, uh, a multi-million dollar judgment against these people, see if you can find look around. Just just Google um, who buys judgments. And uh, there are all kinds of people will pop up that will buy your judgments and <laughs> sell them your judgments. That's how you get paid on your judgments. You're not going to get these ridiculous judgments of millions of dollars from these courts. It's not going to happen. They're not going to do that. 
and you're not going to get these uh, judgments for millions of dollars by doing a warrant through a uh, sheriff's uh, auction. You, nobody owns millions and millions of dollars worth of stuff that's going to sell for retail price out on a curbside at auction. You're never going to get it. So, and you're not going to get it through a lien either. Um, the the lien process does nothing but get a bunch of people in, in trouble. They're they're um, they're charging people with uh, false use of financial instruments because of the way they're doing it. They're not doing it as their, as their person. They're always going to find some kind of flaw in that lien process if you're not perfect in it, and nobody can be perfect. And so then they'll turn around and press charges on you. So you can't do that. The easiest way well, you can, but you're going to end up in prison like a lot of these people. Bruce Dosette's got uh, 30-some plus years along with his friends um, for doing it wrong. I, I don't suggest doing the liens. I don't suggest doing the warrants. I don't suggest anything but selling a judgment to the people that will buy it. Um, in the meantime, think about this stuff, people. Um, learn your contract law and understand how to write, understand how to amend things, understand how to read what they're offering you and know that a lot of the words that they're using aren't words, they are terms. The term driving is in effect in complete opposite of the word travel. The word travel is travel. It's a word. Everybody is familiar with it. The term driver is a term that everybody is familiar with, but isn't isn't cognizant of the fact that it is a term. It is a specifically definite. It has specific definite parameters of a of exactly what it is meant by that word. Whereas traveler, you have all kinds of travelers, but they all travel. You can have all kinds of travelers that drive but they only drive when they're under commerce. Words are defined ambiguously. Terms are specific and definite. They're defined in contracts. And the contracts that they derive these from are your state statutes, your United States codes. Those are contracts. And those words, those are those words that they're they're constructed, the words and terms and everything that they use as they're constructed in those codes are copyrighted and they're copyrighted by Westlaw. You can contact Westlaw and simply ask them if you can use their codes and they will tell you yes as long as you're not using them to make money for compensation. So don't let anybody tell you you can't use these codes. You can just call Westlaw and ask them, period. Courts don't have the copyrights. Westlaw does. So and again, same thing with the Constitution. When the court uh, uh, administrator hollers, we won't be using the, the uh, Constitution in this court today. Bullshit. Bullshit. Constitution is based on the common law. It is the supreme law of the land. And uh, uniform, commercial call, uh, uniform Commercial Code says in 1-103, it is construed to be in harmony with that of the common law. Not in those specific words. But in the terms that they use, it is the same thing. They are construed to have the same equality across all jurisdictions. In other words, these lower courts at your county levels, they're contracted with the state. The state is contracted with the United States. Each state is contracted with the United States. And the United States is contracted with the UN. And the UN is the, form, uh, or is the enforcement of all contract law through the UPU, Universal Postal Union. They reside higher than the IMF, IRS, Federal Reserve, United States, any state, in any county, in any municipality. So understand this. When we want to hold them to, uh, to, the, to, the, uh, to their contracts, what they're doing is the, these contracts are on, on equity law. You have common law. And they're running parallel in the same courts. So, we just need to learn how to use these contracts. Be offensive with them instead of being defended by, uh, offended by them. So, think about this, and I hope this information helps people out. Um, like I said before, I'm going to try to work something up to uh, put something down as a simple format to change these speeding tickets and various different court documents. 
um, so you can look up verses and or terms and words and and get points of clarity yourself so that you can present information to the officer that gave you that citation you don't want to offer it to the state you want to offer it to the man that accused you you want to offer it to the man that offered you the contract you're amending the contract he offered he offered it under on behalf of the state but he's the one that offered it. He's the one you're going to prove is incompetent. So when he offers a contract, it's like going out and trying to sell Bibles door to door. You can't sell the Bible unless you know the Bible. Okay? You can't sell a uh, Kirby vacuum cleaner without being able to show how it, how it works. These officers don't know how it works. They think they're out there just giving out citations. So we're going to amend the contract to show that they're incompetent to even offer a contract. And when the state refuses to answer, they're the ones that originally make the contract with their state statute codes and then contract the officer to enforce those contracts. <laughs> so what we're going to do is prove that the officer is incompetent to even understand the contract he was trying to sell. So think about that and... Remember, people, if it weren't for you, I wouldn't be doing this. God bless you. Love you all. Have a great night. Bye.